David, since you since you started, let's go to, to your topic right now. You are looking at the audited financials for Jamaica UK. broilers. Jamaica broilers, yes. Tell us what the highlights are. These this is the audited financials, or these are the audited financials for the year All ended right. April 2023. How did they do? So, you know, Jamaica broilers really benefited significantly over the last year I bite the constraints, you know. That would have come with heavy increase in inflation. So you saw our revenue went up by 23% from 74 billion to 91 billion dollars. They are barely keeping up to 100 billion dollars as a Jamaican company. And even the revenue levels that they're doing right now is still pretty significant from a general perspective. And you know, profits from their continuing operations was up 56% from 3.43 billion to 5.38 billion dollars. And you know, part of you know why I said a key word continuing operations was because during within the first six months of their financial year at that point, they closed on the operations. They just said, uh, you know, based on all that's going on, even though we've spent, you know, quite a decade plus in this market, it is just no longer safe to do business. And they just call it a day. And you know it's kinda sad, but they chose what was best in their in was in their best interest. So, you know, in on the continuing on the net profit after I include Haiti, you know, it was still up year over year, but at us lower, you know, thirty nine percent year over year increase. And you know, Jamaica broilers, it's pretty interesting from the perspective that if we didn't have COVID you would actually be seeing the price trade after COVID. It wouldn't have higher interest rates, you know, making persons, you know, a little bit more apprehensive of equities, in a sense. You'd probably likely see a higher price on Jamaica broilers because based on their current trading price of $35.01 penny, as of today, relative to the price, relative to the earnings per share, $4.43, they're trading at 7.9 times price to earnings. And, you know, when COVID came, the stock was trading as low as, I think it was like $19. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, stock trading at probably during those times, probably four times earnings right now. And, you know, what you make a brand is that exam another example of just what you'd call a company improving by, you know, the environment we're surrounded by, in the case of economic environment, interest rates, and so forth. However, based on, you know, what's happening in the overall environment of people in general, you're seeing, you know, the stock price not necessarily match that level of growth. If the stock price was still at 60, you probably sell it more in a little more interest based on how we mentally think of stocks on a nominal basis. Uh, but otherwise speaking, you know, your company did pretty well. So year over year they actually increased the number of birds that they produced, meaning the chickens, by 16% to 84, 83 million birds. And, you know, that's largely coming out of Jamaica, which performed considerably well, considering that we would have just seen a rebound in tourism and everything else in the economy. So Jamaica did $45 billion in revenue last year. This year, $58 billion. That sounds nice. But so you look at the second result, which is basically you look at Jamaica as a standalone entity from an operating profit standpoint. It went from $4.85 billion in, net pro in operating profits to basically $7.56 billion in operating profit. So almost a doubling from that perspective. And you know, the USC had a similar level of growth went from $2.45 billion to $3.79 billion. So what you're overall seeing though is that Jamaica Broilers is benefiting from this significant rebound increasing consumption in both local and domestic markets and they're spending also you know 20 million dollars us to increase capacity in the markets overseas as well in terms of the u.s market so between the u.s and jamaican market they're just seeing considerable growth and you know maybe jamaican equities has taken a number six stake in the company you know putting their money where they believe the economy going to see the next significant take off, especially for this business. So, so, right. so they're doing really well. They're doing really well, but 
characteristic of the market right now, the stock price isn't reflecting that. So in cases like these, investors look to dividends. Is Jamaica Broilers a good dividend paying company? Actually, yes. It's funny. So if you're talking about it from a yield perspective, it's going to be on the lower end. But if you're speaking about it from the perspective of more so the growth, it's kind of it was more it's very good. So just checking back right here. So 2.23%, not a very high yield, but probably about a year, two years ago when COVID really crashed and everything, the yield will probably be double what it is right now. But the dividend, had, but I think the year over year comparison, the dividend went up by 11 cents. So that would be about 35% year over year increase in the dividend for the most recent period. And based on the fact that they pay semi annually, Probably around October, we're going to see another significant increase in the div next dividend payment. So you're not like you're going to see a significant splurge or increase in the dividend, considering the reinvestment into the businesses. Otherwise speaking, it's still good. So who am I says, darn, PE is so low for $45 billion in earnings. Is there a lack of investor confidence in JBG? Well, maybe it's in the money where the mouth is. Maybe we spent billions within the last couple of months in particular, especially in March, stocking up on Jamaica Barlows. And, you know, the stock price itself is up this year so far, 12.94%. But otherwise speaking, it's just one of those other companies like Jamaica Broilers, uh, Lasco Manufacturing Lasco Distributors with Cinco. You're having significant growth in companies which represent significant economic activity in the economy, I'm not talking about the banking sector, but more so manufacturing distributors, and you're not seeing that reflection in the stock price. So you have great value based on which other equation you're on, but you're not seeing that reflected in the stock price growth in the same, in the same breath. So it's an interesting dynamic because, yeah, for instance, we've talked about how back in 2000, when the JSC was basically nothing, like directing Jamaica Broilers probably two or three dollars, and the dividend and what is being paid out now is like 35, 40 percent of what they paid then. But otherwise speaking, it's just the reality of the current market we're in. I have a question for both of you before you go, and this question comes from Who Am I on our on our feed, and Who Am I wants to know: Is it unpatriotic to short Jamaican stocks? The JSE has been promising short selling for a few years now. They say it's going to come the end of this year, but is it unpatriotic, Julian, to short a Jamaican stock? No. So a short is essentially a downside bet. So you can bet on the downside of a company. So typically when we buy stocks, we're taking an upside bet. So you buy something with the expectation that it's going to increase in value over a given time frame, and we call that a long position. But short positions are essentially us doing the opposite. So we're expected to make money off the downside. So if the stock falls by a certain amount in a certain time frame, then we make money. And I don't think that's unpatriotic. Um, there are some companies that we could argue are overvalued. And if we believe that a company is overvalued, then we can say, well, let's take a downside bet. I think it's trading above a value that it deserves to trade at. And that's what makes a thesis for, for shorts on any market, whether Jamaica, US, Brazil, wherever. So I don't think it's unpatriotic, not at all. What say you, David? It's not unpatriotic. The reality is shorting adds a necessary balancing piece to the equation. So Julian mentioned it. You're taking a downside bet. But what also happens is that you are creating a balance whereby persons can make money on both sides. So in the current framework of our local market, for example, the only way you can make money on a stock is buy low, sell high. Now, when the stock price is falling, for example, and let's say negative news or something dramatic has occurred, you have no way to make money on that apart from potentially taking another long position, meaning buying the stock at a, what you'd call a low price and send it to a higher price. With shorting, 
you're taking the opposite approach. So you're selling high and buying low. What that means is you are selling the stock, collecting cash, and then you're going to buy back the stock at a lower price and keep that difference in your pocket. So in effect, you have the ability to actually benefit from you know, the downside or the stock going down. And the reality is, just like how you have to actually sell the stock to get the cash to initiate a short position, when you do buy back the stock, you in turn can actually result in the stock price increasing. So we well, all remember the GameStop saga, the GameStop saga, right? So mm-hmm. in that case, you had a lot more first, the stock price increased considerably. And what tends to happen is that sometimes persons have margin or debt against, you know, some of these short positions to fund them. So let's just say the stock increases considerably. The short sellers have to actually, you know, buy back this stock at a loss. And that in turn itself can cause the price to go further. And let's just say the stock price, you know, is falling. The short seller can take a position. And when they do come back in, they're adding liquidity back to the market. So it's a, it's a necessary balance that is needed because realistically speaking, if we are trading right now in our market, you probably sell a lot more trading in the market and a lot more activity. But when you only have the one-way direction to make money, persons who would potentially, let us say, look at the buy queue or look at liquidity in a particular stock and say, it might go up a little bit today or so on, but otherwise speaking, there's no... Uh, opportunity to benefit is the stock goes down. I have to take a loss. And um, when you take that loss, and let's say you sell the stock, so that somebody's going to be in wait. The stock price is going no further. And it's about a continuous cycle, nobody benefits. Yeah. Unless you're going to, as I said, take on a long position and buy the stock. So, for example, you know, I've enjoyed making money of short selling in the US markets. So, when we had the banking crisis back in, uh, you know, that was May, you know, I had a so let's say I got $28 and I bought like a hair on probably $18, you know, $10 spread like that. And, you know, back around my birthday week, back in February, you know, I took a short position against a firm. And let me give you this entire put play. It's only sure, but very simple and nice. So I shorted the stock. So I sold at $18.30, took that money, bought a put option, which, you know, gives me the right to sell a stock at a lower price. So I bought a third, $14 put an $18 put, the price of the stock, you know, fell after the earnings came out from $18 to $12.50 around that range. And, you know, I sold the put option, you know, which went up like almost double, took that put money, but by the stock at a lower price. So I made money on both the short and the put. And in this entire scenario, I didn't use any of my own cash because it was take a, you know, a short position, which got me cash. I took that cash to buy a put. That put went up in value, sold the put, bought by the stock. And, you know, I got cash as profit with no capital outlay. Watch the Even smile. I- Watch the smile, yeah. guys. David with advanced trading strategies. Is this a smile? <laughs> Special learning. No, but can you like, is, is, can can you like, imagine you have zero dollars no, on Friday. And by next Friday, you are leaving with four or five figures in, in profits. Mm-hmm. And you put no upfront capital at all into the trade. You just took a short position and then took that cash to execute another trade. All right, guys. So let me, let me explain for the viewers. Let me explain for the viewers who don't still don't understand what short selling is. Say you have this phone, right? I have this phone. And you said to me, Kalila, let me that phone net till next week. And I lend you my phone. And I expect to get back my phone at a particular time, right? You turn wrong and sell my phone for your grand. Turn around and send my phone for $1,000. And you have that $1,000 now in your pocket. But you also know that at some point in time, I'm going to want back my phone. So you need to buy back the phone. Now you turn around and go downtown or wherever it is you go, and you find this exact same phone for $500. And you buy that phone for $500. And then you give me back a new phone because that said the phone was new, so there was no sentimental value. You give me back the new phone that you only paid $500 for, and then you pocket the difference because you sold my phone for $1,000. Buy back me a phone. Buy back a phone for me for $500. Give me back my phone, and then you kept the $500. That's how short selling works in layman's terms. So it's, substitute, it's very the, phone, fun. It's but very substitute fun. the phone with stocks, and that's exactly what short selling is. 
And that's what David was doing with his put options and how he got money in his pocket to invest and buy the put and all of that stuff. So one of these days we have to do a session on advanced trading strategies so people can, you know, get all of this and take advantage it's, of these opportunities. It's very, it's, yeah, it's not overly technical, but to keep it simple, I didn't explain something a while ago. So with the put option, you're getting the right to sell the stock at a particular price. So that same example, Kalila, right? Let us say the stock goes from $1,000 to $500, and let us say I had a $750 put. That means that instead of you being able to sell the stock at $500 on the market, you can instead sell it at $750. So other persons, let us say, you know, who would want to take advantage of an exit, you know, let us say they own the stock and they want to sell at $500. They can buy my put option from me as a premium and, you know, they didn't get the ability to actually sell those shares at, you know, $750. So, like, that's an example of a derivative in the international markets. But, you know, at the end of the day, short selling allowed me to, you know, get that cash in hand to fund another trade. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's just the reality and beauty about financial markets because look at margin loans. You're borrowing against the value of your existing equity portfolio or, you know, just securities portfolio. And, you know, this is just, you know, why I love talking on your program and other places, because once you get to appreciate these things, you just realize, wow, you can actually take an educated guess or just, you know, do good research and get rewarded for it through profit. I remember my friend sent me a post, you know, where he bought a put option Dollar General and it, Dollar General stock price from like $200 the day before earnings to like $150. And his put option, he bought from $50 US to $1,050 overnight. So $1,000 profit overnight, $150 grand Jamaican dollars. Nice. Very nice. We're going to have to leave it there, guys. Great discussion. We have to have a follow-up conversation at some point about short selling, especially when that finally does become available for Jamaica. But thank you guys so much for the conversation. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, David. You're welcome, Kalila.